Why do we get sick? Not because we don't live like our ancestors, we don't eat like our ancestors, we don't, and we live in a world that is polluted. Every day, every one of us is intoxicated, poisoned. Nah? So if you don't, if you are not poisoned, you are not from this world. <laughs> you must be an alien, they say. Alright? So we are every little bit of excess. Alright? So genetic factor only accounts for five, maybe ten percent of diseases. Alright? Or oh, don't say it's because my ancestor, my mother, father got diabetes. Doesn't mean you have to get diabetes. It's only five to ten percent. The, the other 90% are the epigenetic factors. Right? Before I go on to the prebiotic and gut health, we will, I want to show you about this aspect. All these are epigenetic factors. Epigenetic is different from genetics. Right? Epigenetic is a natural process that regulates our 20,000 plus DNA. There are chemicals that turn it on and chemicals that turn it off according to requirement. Right? So, all these epigenetic factors will cause our gene expression in a bad way, resulting in chronic disease. Right? So, this will all of these factors will affect the gut. So this is what happens in the gut. All those epigenetic factors will cause this problem. This is a normal gut barrier. These are the cells of the intestine. And it's normal to form a tight junction. Right? It will prevent uh, toxins from passing through into the blood circuit. But when there is uh, triggering factors like this, drugs, antibiotic, vaccines, stress, you just need Every day we are subjected to this and it will cause increased intestinal permeability. The, the cell tight junction becomes separate, allowing toxins to come through. The protein that causes this leaky gut is called zonulin. And these are the factors that trigger the production of zonulin, causing leaky. And that results with endotoxemia. Toxin you get into the blood causes the immune system response. And that would give rise to practically any disease. Right? So if you want to cure in a functional way, in a non-drug based way, we have to fix it. With what? With nutrients. In your center there, I saw so many nutrients uh, to help reverse disease. Right? So, and that's how. To, so the gut is connected to all kinds of diseases. You know? So I'm sure. Is that the same in TCM? Do you have this principle? No? Mm -hmm. So we share quite a common issue. Now, drug tests, blood tests that we normally do, you know, kidney, liver, you just name it. Basically, this test, uh, basically this test, in my, in my practice, is yeah. in, insufficient. Because it doesn't look at the root cause of it. It doesn't look for the metal toxicity. It doesn't look at the vitamin deficiency. Right? It doesn't look at the amino acid or mineral deficiency, zinc, magnesium, it doesn't look at all these deficiencies. So we need to do a more extensive range of blood tests than you can find the root cause. Of I just want to share with you about during the time of COVID. Right? You use to treat COVID here. I don't know whether you use vitamin C, right? But here we ask the government to use vitamin C in the hospital for patients in ICU. Huh? So by providing high doses of vitamin C, 
we get a reduction of the death rate from 71% with vitamin C to 14%. Alright? So this is one approach that we use in functional medicine. And you get all kinds of symptoms. I'm sure you experience with this. <coughs> and this is what the main cause of the problem. Coagulation. And generally doctors don't know how to reverse this. But in the functional, we know how to fix it. And you also think you know how to fix it in your way. So drugs don't work, they lead to complications. Like here you are seeing a lot of cardiovascular cases, hypertension, coronary heart disease. Alright? So doctors generally just focus on cholesterol. I think cholesterol I saw it stop on the list there. Alright? But we are missing something. We are missing the calcium. Calcium deposition in the plaque. Doctors are not addressing. We need to remove. And there are no drugs to remove calcium from the arteries except for vitamin K2, which we don't use, right? Okay. Vitamin K2, it removes the calcium deposition from the arteries and sends the calcium back to the bone. Isn't that good? You clear up the arteries and you got strong bone. And if you are drinking milk or calcium tablet, you cannot do that without K2. With K2 in your system, the K2 will grab whatever calcium is coming in and send them all to the bone before it goes everywhere. So vitamin K2 is very important. Studies I have done overseas. Sweden, Rotterdam, it shows that it reduces the cardiovascular risk by 50%. Just K2 alone reduces the incidence by 50%. So it's a value for money. Right? So I don't sell, I'm not selling vitamin K2, but later I will show you how to produce your own K2. Wow! Right? <laughs> Free. <laughs> ah, you can produce your own K2 in the corner. Alright, let's go. Ah, I hope you still don't believe that cholesterol is the cause of heart disease. Alright? Because these cardiologists, they say cholesterol is not the reason for the heart diseases. These are world experts, ah, world cardiologists, they say it's sugar and inflammation. Not cholesterol. Half the cases of coronary heart disease and cholesterol are normal. And that's why in our muffin conference, there's also a cardiologist attending on this chair. Huh? He's a regular. So this is what we call metabolic cardiology. A natural approach to treat heart disease, vascular diseases and hypertension is to... And some of it I'm taking every day. <coughs> I don't have a heart disease, but I have a family history. It's no big deal, right? Doesn't mean I'm going to get a heart disease. But if you can do some modification, you can avoid. This was me before. Obese doctor. You want what? Repeat? The earlier side. Okay. Go on. This is metabolic cardiology, which I think we should include. I include. By any standard, gray oil, 23 k 2 4Q10. Look at the dose. Right? These are the regimen, the protocol that was prescribed by the previous doctors. Uh, this was me before. Before functional medicine. No, you could, don't recognize me. Right? The food pyramid is wrong. This is what we have. Food pyramid. Huh? A lot of carbohydrate and meat and fat. But when I inverted the food pyramid, <coughs> you see, the, that food pyramid caused high insulin. I don't know whether you check here your patient's insulin regularly. No? It's very important. Metabolic diseases must check. So I hope from now on, do check your insulin. Because the insulin is the 
precursor to hormone imbalance, to PCOS, and many other things. And if you can, if you know how to break down the insulin in the body, then you can start reversing. So when I what I did was I inverted the food pyramid. When I stopped taking carbohydrate, my blood insulin goes down. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. Alright? Then you don't get high insulin because you eat fat. You get high insulin because carbohydrate. So when I stop the carbohydrate, my insulin level goes down. And that's me six months later. Right? This picture was uh, four years ago. Right? My grandson who was autistic, but now he's and I will show you how to reverse it. That's my life. So, insulin. Do check. No? So what I did was to, to bring my weight down was ketogenic diet, fasting and pre-biotic. At the end, I will talk about pre-biotic. So, we are, we are made up of Human cells or bacteria? Actually, we have about 10 trillion human cells in our body. But we are inside of us and on us about 30 to 50 trillion microbes. Before they used to say 100 trillion microbes on us and in us. So we are more microbes than human. Cell, cellular ones. Gene -wise. We have more microbial genes than we have our own human genes. Scary, right? No wonder we cannot see all the microbes crawling on your face. Right? Otherwise, you'll be the first one to go up. Right? So, scary, but God made us, we cannot see. But scientifically, it's proven. And 80% is residing in the large intestine in the colon. No? So we know about anti -pro antibiotic, we know about probiotic. These are the good microbes that we already have in, in us and on us. Even in our mouth, in our eyes, we have. But prebiotic is something new. Right? Among doctors, very new. Prebiotic, according to WHO, is the food that feed the good microbes that we already have. Without prebiotic, all your probiotic that you have within two or three weeks will die. And they will not be functioning. So prebiotic is the food for the good microbes. Good. So if you take probiotic, whether it's no, artificial or whether it's uh, probiotic food like kimchi, natto, sauerkraut, whatever, okay, you still need to feed the microbes. And the food is free microbes. This is the effect of antibiotics. I think you all know that, right? It kills everything except for the virus. And that's why when COVID comes along, you never free time. And prebiotic, what it does, the prebiotic feeds only the good microbes. And when they increase number, they will help kick out all the bad ones. And that's how to stay healthy with So these are the microbes. The microbes in our gut is not just there for show. Every time, all the time, they are talking to each other. They are talking with the human cells, producing vitamins, producing hormones even. They are producing brain signals. We don't realize it, but without the good microbes, we'll be a different. Right? So as for taking probiotic, this university in Israel, they have done so many research and they come to the conclusion in 2018 that the
probiotic that is you are taking in through capsules or sachet, they doubt if it works and they fear that it might interfere with your own natural probiotic that you already have. So the best way is to feed your own microbes with prebiotic. In fact, Dr. Sabine Hazan, she's a, a gastroenterologist from Los Angeles with 30 years of research and she doesn't believe oral. She's done so many research on so many brands, it fails her expectation. Right? But now she's using prebiotic. So when you eat prebiotic, the, the good microbes in our colon will consume the prebiotic, producing all these things. That's where you see vitamin K2. So when you take prebiotic, you produce your own K2. Right? So that will save you from the calcium overload. So that's one. These are the other benefits. So anyway, let's go to this. Any questions before this? I know it's a bit uh, heavy, you know, but I try not to go into too much details, right? In fact, if I go into detail, you automatically fall asleep. <laughs> All right? So, our brain and our gut embryologically arise from the same tissue. They're made from the same tissue. But during development, one part becomes the brain in the head, the other part becomes the enteric nervous system. The nervous system in the colon, in the intestine. Right? And that is now called our second brain. Maybe first time for you to hear, we have two brains, not left and right. Stop. It's made of the enteric nervous system. This enteric nervous system is like a mesh-like network containing 500 million neurons. Right? More than the neurons in the entire spinal cord is located in the cord. Right? So it's communicating. You know? It's a bi-directional. It's not just a one-way. When we learn in medicine, is that only the brain is telling the, the other parts of the body? But now we know the enteric nervous system is sending 90% of the signal to the brain. Right? And that's why we call it gut feeling. We have that gut feeling in some yeah, Because most of the signal, 90% is going to the brain. 50% nine of GABA, 95% of serotonin, <coughs> is produced in the by the microbes. If we don't take care of the microbes, you go. Alright? So it's a bi-directional thing. It controls our autonomic nervous system. Right? It controls the gut. And it can work autonomously by itself. It doesn't need the brain to function. Take care of your second brain. Don't forget what you're saying. So this scientist in US, she, he says that free by day is more important than yeah. And the soluble fiber is better than the insoluble. Before in the US, overseas, they always talk about probiotic. That's all we hear, right? We only hear about probiotics. But now they are changing to the prebiotic balance. So prebiotic, where can you get? You can get prebiotic from the vegetables. Yes, you can get that tea. But not nothing compared to young arabic. Young arabic is the highest 85%. Even breast milk have only 30%. If 30% is good 
enough with a baby? What's 85 percent going to do? Right. You can give it to pregnant women. <coughs> Not an issue. Right. So these are the things what it does. So with the slides you can share with your staff and you can go through. Alright? It has a lot of benefit. One prebiotic that is commonly used in Europe is called inulin. Anybody heard of inulin? No? Inulin is something very commonly used. But it's not as effective as gum element medication. Right? What it does, prebiotic, is to boost the good or the bad? The good. Alright? So it is superior compared to inulin. So this is the so in, in, in the milk milk preparation in the milk formula you sometimes you find probiotic, prebiotic, right? So the prebiotic in any of those commercial stuff, normally it is inulin. So as you see here just now, inulin is inferior compared to gum arabic. It's very new to you all, gum arabic. Nagesh, yes. you're not a doctor, but you use gum arabic. Yeah. Right? Yes. Is this good? Yeah, it's very good. Right? Very effective. Very effective. She treats. Uh, she's not a doctor, but she treats uh, diabetic ulcers. And what she does? She takes the gum arabic, place it on the wound. Ulcers. So this is the gum arabic. This is one product I believe. Huh? Also Tansri also mentioned to me, wow. We may want to have your gum arabic. So that's why I come here. Thanks to you. I've been invited to talk about gum arabic. This is one product I believe will complement your health center. Right? It's not just for drinking. You can even apply. I will show you. So gum arabic, it sounds strange, you like something from Africa, huh? It is from Africa, right? It's from the desert, semi-desert area, in this kind of area, right? This is, it is, it comes from the sap of the acacia tree, alright? When it bark breaks, the sap comes out. That is the gum. That is the gum. And then in Africa, they just take it and they just eat it. If you're hungry, you've got nothing to eat, you just take it. And then they take some extra food in the pocket and that's it. They can survive for days without food, just from eating the gum. So I'll, I'll show the content. What is the content? Alright? So, acacia fiber, that gum there, so many research have been done. You know? So many that I left all the some of the research at the last, which I will not go through, but you, I think you have the research paper, you can go through. <coughs> right. So the content. Where's the content? We want to see what is it? Where's the gum Arabic? The drink. 